Hello and welcome to the first video devlog for my upcoming game, Real to Real. This engine has already been in development for two years, notably for the release of the FNAF fan game Fazanum, but Real to Real started development much before that. Now that Fazanum is out, I can shift work to completing this long-awaited project. For those unaware, the RR engine is an engine built in Unity for digitally simulating animatronic shows. RR intends on recreating the original Chuck E. Cheese animatronic experience as closely as possible. Due to the continued deterioration of actual animatronics, and how costly it can be to get your hands on one nowadays, giving people the option to experience a full working show is very important for the preservation of this history. While the software started with people just being able to animate their own custom content, there is now a way for us to play original show tapes within the game. Most of the fandom has only experienced these tapes from what could be displayed on the TVs or catching a glimpse of home video, completely missing the original experience of watching the animatronics perform. This breakthrough now lets us experience shows we've never seen play before. Sure, the wonderful thing about percussion isn't what you beat on, it's the beat itself. Yeah, percussion is the rhythm that feels right. The beat that guides your feet. The groove that makes you move. Turn it upside down. The software has a built-in editor for viewing a timeline of the animation, which has let us discover when certain parts of a stage stop being programmed. Even if you do head to a Chuck E. Cheese's today, a lot of special effects have changed or removed long ago. RR being digital lets us switch between all the variations on the fly, which can customize the viewing experience for the player. So on to the devlog. To catch everyone up on development, three main things are being worked on. Cyberamics, the three stage, and Studio C. The three stage is the most complete, with almost all the stage effects and some complete characters. Just last week I finished Chuck's cosmetics, using the original 1991 latex mask and tux. The game was originally textured by hand, but I'm now moving development into Substance Painter for more accurate look. The Cyberamics are second to completion. Most of the lights are at least functional, and two characters are complete. The problem with Cybers though is the insane amount of variations across their 40 year history, so I may have one variation done soon, but they'll be a pretty monumental task to fully finish. Alongside the balcony stage, I do have a half finished one stage, which accounts for some of the lights and effects they changed during the 90s. Studio C is the most unfinished. Just a simple bot with only half the movements actually done and some quickly placed lights and screens just to have them usable. This weekend, I've been working on finishing up the Studio C bot, which is the classic 32M version. Unlike all the other animatronic mechs I've had to spend forever working on, Garner Holt's complex design with very few images to work with has certainly been a challenge to get right. A lot of stuff is tightly packed together, meaning half the time spent modeling is just staring at images trying to wrap my brain around it. Alright, so this is day two of working on Chuck. So here is the mech so far. I've got almost all the face done, uh, especially for the eyes. That was the most complex part I had to do. Um, and I think the only thing I have left for this is doing the ear mechs. And then when I have these cosmetics on, which I've also done, these shells right here, uh, I have to do eyebrow mechs that will be right here. And they're actually on the shell, not on the mech. And yes, I've done these shells, so it's the back head, forward head, back and forward body, and back and forward legs. And there will also be a foot tap I need to do here that will have a little, I think it's a foam or just latex foot right here. And then for the body, I still need to do the body lean. Uh, I think a body twist or maybe the head twist right here. Yeah, and then the body tilt. And then it should be done and ready to be put in the game. 
So this is a day later. I uh, decided to stop working on Chuck for a bit and actually work on the software, try to improve it because I haven't done that in a while. Um, so I decided to take a crack at the editor. So the first major change here is I split the original views you could change between into three whole sections. So this is the cameras right here. So you can change between all the cameras on the stage. This is the bit chart that shows all the programming bits that are being animated right now. Um, they're split between the top drawer right here and the bottom drawer right here. And then over here is the video, if there's any video that is up on the TVs. So I have all that. And then down here, I have now added colored groups for certain groups of bits. So if it's Chuck or Munch or Pasquale, uh, they will have all their groups colored. So that way you can tell really quickly when you're scrolling through. Because some of them are a little jumbled up and will overlap each other when you're viewing it from number 1 to number 200. So it is good to get colors in there so you know what you're looking at. And then also here I have some new padding buttons. So if I were to go here, anything past this cursor will be padded outwards. That's probably a bad example. There we go, right here. So you can pad or you can go backwards. So that will help for trying to line up if anything's offset or out of sync. Um, you could already do this with individual lines right here by right clicking on the name. Uh, but you could not do it for every line all at once. I also went ahead and added some things to the actual stage. So the first thing to notice is these fiber optic stars back here. So I had to do some shader work to get them to all blink like that. So they can be turned on and off on the stage. And then over here is the TV light, which is the same programming bit as these blue lamps behind the star right here. So very nice looking. And then we also have a new costume for Jasper. It is the red overalls costume. So this was from the, um, I think the first concept unification from the original Premiere demo. Um, I think only one store had this. So, but it is still a very cool costume to have. All right, this is a few days later and he is done. I've got him textured all up in substance. He's rigged already. All of his movements have been animated now. And same thing with the shells on. Looks very nice. All right, let's hop into Unity and see it in action. All right, here he is in Unity. So I think the most interesting movement out of all 32 of these is definitely the head turn movement right here. So it is turning this cylinder, but it's doing it through an upwards motion because there's a hinge right here. There's a lot of moving parts to get that to work, just to get the head moving and to fit it in that little space right there. Um, I think also the eyes are definitely very compact. There's a little cylinder, which button is it? This one right here. It's a double, double cylinder right there that is just moving. There's a little eye bar, kind of like on most animatronics, there's a little eye bar that moves both eyes at the same time. Um, but it's very kind of shoved in there. And same thing with the eyelids and how close they are that they don't actually touch each other when they're moving around. So, pretty cool. Alright, let's see him play a show tape. And that's what this week's devlog has been. By next time, Chuck should have all of his late night cosmetics done, and we'll see where to go from there. Though I do like releasing my software early to allow extensive testing, Real to Real still isn't out yet, until I get more things resolved. Despite the nice looking shows, a lot of the software still uses conventions and layouts from Fazanim, which don't fit the tone I'm going for with this. 
Since having a way to see these shows in action is pretty important, I'll be sure to have it out soon for the community. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy these devlogs with me as we get closer to completion.